been introductions and we have oh probably 25 people in the room debaters in the room with some neat plaques and trophies and so Brian uh, at this time it's my honor to introduce to you the coaches of uh, the high school debate team and the wonderful students who have participated and have brought home lots of uh, trophies to be stored in our new trophy case hopefully in the future so in the, in the near future Anybody that wants an argument, they're here. <laughs> I'll turn over to Mr. Hansen. Thank you. And Mr. <laughs> 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 Uh, this year, the Merrill Debate Team has had extraordinary success. Every year, we've kind of been building and adding. Uh, this year, we earned a total of 82 different awards. Uh, for various competitions, and most significant of which would be the two, uh, well, actually three awards that we received at the varsity level uh, in state level competition. Uh, debate has several different organizations within the state which uh, debaters can compete in, but there's only two state competitions, and we managed to take first place at both. <clears throat> so this year, uh, the debate team has put a significant amount of work into into you know what they what they've accomplished. And uh, they, they really have earned it. I, I think that many of them have been with the team for, for several years, three years. Uh, many of them have been with it. And uh, it, it, it was their time. They, they've worked hard and they, they really have excelled. And number one, I would say, uh, <coughs> I'd been asked, I was, I've been asked by many people, you know, what, what makes this, this program a success? And I would have to say that we, the community. Uh, and that's one thing I, want, I definitely wanted to come here tonight and acknowledge that that we don't have the funds that other schools have. You know, other schools have, have huge budgets dedicated to this, and, and it's the community that has have kind of stepped forward and really allowed us to be where we are. Uh, we, get, we have received donations and received sponsorship and, uh, from a multiple, you know, multiple organizations around this community, from small businesses to big businesses to banks to insurance companies. It, it, without them, we wouldn't be here. Thing, Mrs. Well, I think their success um, is all of their hard work. You know, they, even when we aren't at state competition, when we do the individual schools where we meet anywhere between 16 and 20 different schools, um, whether they're a first-year debater or a fourth-year debater, um, they are a group that you can all be proud of. They represented Merrill well. And a lot of their success goes to Mr. Hansen, too, for his persistence. <laughs> <laughs> and his expectations. You know, he, sets his, he sets the expectations high for these kids, but, and, but yet there's incentives if they accomplish those. Personal team incentives, and you know they feel good about what they do, too. Um, I don't know that I'd want to face any one of them individually. <laughs> I do on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think all of them have worked hard. Could we have um, each one maybe stand up and turn and just give their name and say what uh, what year they are in debate? Or? Just to give a, a quick two, there, not, not all of the team is here. There are 33 people on the team, a couple of people who couldn't make it. But sure. um, why don't we start, if you don't mind, no, start with the, the varsity uh, debaters that did take first. If you could if you could stand first and acknowledge who you are. and. <coughs> Yeah, all three of you. <laughs> the fourth person, uh, Jess Bianchi, was not able to make it. She had to work, so. I'm Logan. I'm obviously part of this great team here. And, uh, my partner over there, Carly, is an awesome guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Jerry Saplin, and I'm on the affirmative side of this debate team, and I'd also like to represent my partner, Jessica Yankee, who also helped us take a first place at both Tournament of Champions and at WHSFA. So on behalf of her, I'd like to say thank you as well. Um, I'm Corey Malos, and I'm the last of a dying breed. <laughs> Thank you. I'm 
Joe Bremen, and this was my second year in debate, and I'm a sophomore. <laughs> I'm Chris Harvey, my third year in debate, and JV. Um, my name is Christina Jacko. I'm a third year debater. Um, I'm varsity also, and Sarah was my one of my F pairs, and I'm a, her Meg F, along with my partner Amanda Peterson, who doesn't seem to be here, but <laughs> I appreciate her too. Thank you. My name is Scott Havik, and this is my first year debating, and I represented the affirmative Navis team this year. Um, I'm Melissa Rash, and this is my first year in debate, and I'm a Mavis, and I represent the negative side. Um, my name is Sarah Free, and it was my first year debating, I was a Mavis, and she was my partner for negative, and Scott, and her um, other partner, Marissa Beckman, was the affirmative side, and Marissa's not here tonight either. Okay. I'm Ashley Free, this is my second year debating. Um, I was JV this year, and I just want to say that I have a wonderful partner. She was novice at the beginning of the year, and she was my partner for JV because my partner from last year wasn't able to do debate this year, and we did very well together, and so I want to thank her for being my partner this year. And there's something genetic about the 40s. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Danielle Hatchmanette, and this is my first year in debate, and like she said, I was novice at the beginning of the year, and now I got to go JV with her, and we had a lot of fun. And our negatives will introduce themselves <laughs> All right, I'm not her negative, but I was, uh, J or this is my second year in debate. I'm a uh, JV neg, uh, got to go with Joe this year. Really cool. Hansen keeps sticking me with good people. Um, I'm Jenny Dom. I'm a first year debater. I was a novice this year and a converted affirmative. <laughs> and um, my partner was stuck here, but she couldn't make it tonight. Okay. My name is Katie Helmstetter. This is my second year in debate, JV. Um, Chris here is my affirmative partner, and then our neg pair were Joe and Jeremy. I'm Sarah Mamer. I'm a freshman. I was a novice this year. Uh, my partner couldn't make it tonight, uh, Janine again. And our affirmative side was Jenny and her partner. I'm Nikki Maxwell. It's my third year in debate, and I'm also a varsity debater. My partner was Sarah Saw, and we represented the affirmative side. And our negatives were Amanda who is unfortunately not here, and Christina Jacqueline as well. Thank you. I'm Andrew Whirlin. I'm a third year debater, and I'm a negative. <laughs> I'm Andrew Swanson. I'm a negative. I was uh, I was fortunate to be pairs, uh, the negative pair with uh, Ashley Free at the state tournament of champions, and we took fourth place. Not through my partner's and I's efforts entirely. Um, we did work very hard, but I think that uh, a 380 record at the state competition level deserves something special. Um, these are excellent debaters. <laughs> Um, I'm Ian McGordon, and this is my second year debating, and I'm a negative, and this is my partner. <laughs> <laughs> and so, just, you were going to say that, uh, uh, so th there is only, you guys can sit, thank you. Um, the, just, just so people understand, there is only one competition where JV and novice debaters actually get to compete. Uh, right now, the organization's kind of struggling with the definitions of, of those categories, but the novice debaters are first year debaters, and generally, JV debaters are, are second and third year debaters. Um, and the oftentimes, with, with all the first place trophies that have gone to this varsity team, it kind of, they kind of tend to outshine, but we had, we had a JV team that did tie for third place and take fourth place in, in the tiebreaker, and that was uh, Danielle and Ashley. They did go undefeated at that tournament, and uh, Ian and Andrew were on the other side of that. And they, they did accomplish that. And our novice team uh, tied for fourth place, I believe, and received honorable mention in the tiebreaker. So just an extraordinary year all the way around. Everybody did a great job. And our other varsity team that we had, we had two varsity squads this year. Uh, the other varsity team did very well as well. Uh, one side going five and one and showing very good, having very good showing. So. I think another thing that speaks to their success is you know, they, they talk about having partners and being four-man teams. However, throughout the course of the year, that doesn't happen. As Jenny said, she's a converted affirmative. She started out negative, and she was not changing. 
Uh, but by um, suggestion of their coach, um, they have to switch partners and sometimes choose debate the other side as well at different tournaments. And I think that makes them better debaters because they have to be familiar with thinking on their feet and, and learning how to respond to the same issue from the other side. So I think that's one thing. They might not always agree with that, but I think they learn very well from that. It makes them better. And the happiest thing I have to say about this team is that I, even if we didn't win a single trophy, the thing that makes me the happiest is that this team is really bonded well together. And the fact that so many of them showed up tonight and, and they, they'll show up to things together all the time. They, they work together. and debate. Many debate programs really focus on four-person teams and, and just the way debate works. Four, four people get together, they debate, and it's their combined record that allows them to do well at a tournament. Uh, our focus isn't on that. Our focus is on all of these people bonding together and working together and achieving as a team, and that's worked very well. It and made me very happy. I'm very proud of them. Any brief comments from the board? Lynn, what was the topic? This year's topic, uh, <laughs> it, it is a year-long topic every single year. It's picked by the National Forensics League. Um, and well, we, we actually get to vote, all the member, all the states get to vote. We kinda, it's kind of like an electoral sort of process. And this year's po uh, topic was ocean policy. So, you know, Merrill being about the furthest you can get. first place, so. Well, thank you so much to the coaches and the kids. Yep. United Nations. <laughs> Thank you very much for getting up a little bit. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. questions or comments to uh, to come forward and uh, request floor privileges. Um, we do have, uh, I guess, the, uh, the opportunities to run for school board. Um, the deadline is over and we have three posted candidates. Um, Tom Muller and Louise Schatz are running again as return board members. Lynn Zettner is retiring from the board and we have um, one new candidate, Andrew Dorn, in the audience this evening. And so, Anne, if there is anything on the agenda um, that you would like to request uh, floor privileges on, uh, this would be the time to do it. I'll let you think about that for a minute while we see if anybody else has anything. Okay, nothing this evening. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to make a comment or a general request? John. I move to grant Anne floor privileges on any discussion. We have done that in the past. Um, okay. Do we have a second? It's not a posted agenda item, so I call it. I, I'm not confident that that's appropriate at this time. I'm not trying to say that it's not a good idea. I just it's not a posted agenda item. So See what I'm saying? The no. motions that we do are a reference to. Um, It very well may be, I just have a red flag, is what I'm saying. So would you prefer that we research it and maybe make it an agenda item? That would be my suggestion. She's already referenced that she doesn't tonight, if you don't mind. I, I'd, be, I'd feel more comfortable with it, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Any other consensus or discussion? Seeing none, 
Anyone else have any um, public comments or gender requests at this time? Tom. Yes, I just would like to uh, mention that Washington School had another very successful lighted schoolhouse last Monday. Uh, I guess I would wonder if Karen Helps might uh, describe a little bit some of the uh, publicity that was uh, mm -hmm. resulted from that. that I, I did see that little blur here. <laughs> Maybe you could share, it. Just taping a, it, so. <laughs> share just a minute of, uh, of your activities from me. Our attendance was actually about half of what it normally is, but I think with the Christmas break and having to have the RSVPs back the day or two after Christmas break, that was why. But we focused on math, and we had some tax people in that our parents could ask for free tax advice, and a guy that came and did something on investing in your child's future education. A couple of our teachers did some things, math games, learning games that you can do with your kids using a deck of cards or dice or things like that. Um, our computer lab, Terry Turlot, had that open again and featured some math software that kids are using and also some fun math websites. Family Resource Center partnered with us and did some things on working with your kids with allowance and things like that. And then we had a team from Tomahawk that Mona get he knows um, that taught cribbage that night because that's a great game to teach math and counting and so forth. And Artist Mark Key, a retired educator at Washington, did a neat thing on New Year's resolutions for fitness, financial, and fun with the family. So we just had a great night and as you um, saw by my email, Mona Getke was honored by the um, Merrill Ford together as a champion of youth, so that was really cool. Thank you and what a wonderful opportunity for families. It's just exciting to see that kind of attendance. That's and really we got our retired administrator guys, that's what I call them, the regs, retired administrator guys to serve the meal that night. So Dr. Neal was there and two of the former principals of Washington were there serving the meal, so it was great. Oh. Very good. Thank you for pressing them into service. <laughs> Is there anyone else that has any comments or thoughts to share? Seeing none, we'll move on from public comments. Um, administrative reports, I believe there was just one that was added in our, um, we just received one as a memo from one of the administrators, group, but there's nothing just else in our package. So if you go over here. Thank you. Um, and we did, we did 18. The district audit review will be next on the agenda. I believe Mr. Miller is with us this evening. And I believe everyone on the board received a copy of the audit, the whole packet form. And in your um, agenda, there are some pages just of the administrative letter. Would you wish to just maybe briefly kind of go over that? Briefly? Yes. I'm going to go through this whole thing. When I'm oh, done, thank you. There's going to be a quiz. <laughs> at the last school I was at, uh, Sean, Sean Gresham, the board, one of the board members said, do we really have to go through this? Said, Does anybody know what this guy's talking about? When we're done. So I told him, I said, we're going through the whole thing, and it'll be a quiz. No, we will uh, be brief, uh, but I will tell you, um, if you're a little confused by some of the numbers, for those of you that have been on the board for several years and have been gone back and looked at a different report, <coughs> this report can be confusing because it's presented in two ways. It's for the year ended June 30, 2003, of course. Uh, one way is, is called the GASB way. Uh, we incorporated some new accounting standards. You're of such a size that uh, <coughs> the accounting industry now says we have to look at you more like a business where we take your capital assets instead of sticking them over on the side in a memo type of entry, <coughs> we have to put them in the different funds that you operate under. So as a result, your funds are increased in value because of the millions of dollars of capital assets that, uh, that are controlled by the fund. In the same respect, long-term debt is no longer shoved over on the side, uh, which is a traditional government approach. It now also belongs in the individual funds for which the debt was incurred. And uh, as well as depreciation on your assets and, and uh, in, in interest and principal payments on your long-term debt. So what, it, in essence, uh, if you did not have a lot of new debt, and, and this is, you district get a lot of new debt, they have a lot of new buildings. Uh, they had a building program uh, five or six years ago. And uh, so you have a lot of debt that pretty much is equal to the value of your building. So actually, you really did not do that much as far as increasing your fund balance. But uh, I'm just going to briefly go through what, what is a new part of the audit is called a management discussion and analysis, and it's really a district letter which uh, summarizes uh, the financial statements. It's 
It's on page three of the audit. <coughs> Um, I'm going to go through the highlights of it. Um, the, uh, if you look on page page six, and, and the presentation that's discussed in the uh, uh, management discuss, discussion analysis pretty much talks about uh, the new the, the the ideas or the statements that are presented are presented uh, in accordance with the new accounting uh, uh, concepts. Page six is, is an income statement. It's no longer called an income statement. It's now called a statement of net assets. But basically, it's the same uh, type of statement that you would have found in last year's uh, audit report, only it would have been called a statement of revenue and expenditures. Um, it talks about government activities in the first column. And basically, what that means is that those are all the activities of the school district, with the exception of food service, which is accounted for in the second column. The, the district has elected to uh, to um, uh, just use the food service as a proprietary or business type activity uh, where the funds do not, for example, go back into a, a general fund to become part of the budget process again. Those funds stay in that activity. Uh, the district charges fees more based on actual costs in addition to state aid. So, uh, so that particular function, the food, the food service function, is separated from all your government activities. And in summary form, because Pat mentioned something to me about 10 minutes, if you look toward the bottom, uh, you have net assets, the bottom figure, which is net assets, June 30, 2003, of $1,146,646. That is the net worth of the district. If you had a balance sheet, if I could just have you look real quickly at page, um, hold, hold this page also. Look real quickly at page nine. Page six would be the balance sheet or the roadmap. Page nine, or excuse me, page six would be the income statement or the roadmap. Page nine would be the balance sheet or the snapshot as of one day on June 30, 2003. You'll see the bottom figure, total net assets of one million one hundred forty-six six forty-six. And, and just a few notations about the balance sheet. You'll notice if you go down to the second set of assets, it's a, first it says assets, current assets, and then non-current assets. Uh, you'll notice you would have not seen these figures in your previous uh, balance sheet uh, where we, we list all of your different uh, net assets. Those are assets net of depreciation of $28,775,000. Uh, and then if you look at your liabilities underneath there, current liabilities, and in the next section, non-current liabilities. Actually, the non-current liabilities pretty much represent the debt that's uh, set, that, uh, the debt that was used for, for uh, construction of the building. So uh, last year, you would have had a fund balance that didn't include this. Um, the 1,146,646 net asset value uh, actually has, um, includes $925,000 that's restricted for future debt payments. Uh, right above that, I'm looking at the bottom of the page here, uh, the 5317000 is your net investment in capital assets, and that would be your capital assets less any debt that is identified to, to purchasing the capital assets. So really what that leaves is, is, un, is unrestricted, which is a deficit. And the unrestricted, uh, ordinarily, under the traditional prior years, would not have been negative. But what happens under this concept is we have long-term debt. It's, it's not only long-term debt that's been used for buildings, it's also long-term debt that's tied into future benefits of employees. And that's the big one that uh, really brings this thing down. Uh, previously, again, in previous audit reports, that's been uh, discussed or discussed in memo fund but has not been allocated to a particular fund. So you have, for example, your unfunded uh, liability of the Wisconsin Retirement Fund, which we've talked about in the past. You have uh, sick leave accruals uh, convertible to um, future benefits for health insurance for employees. We book those if we know the employee is eligible for retirement. In addition, there are amounts uh, that are not booked, which if you would have, would have an actuary study, uh, would probably at least equal double that amount. Um, 
and that would be based on people who are not yet eligible for retirement, but their chances of retirement are uh, statistically determined, could be just statistically determined times the uh, benefits that they would have come. And uh, districts aren't required to do that, but there is a um, I, I'm, I'm, there is an accounting concept being floated around that says governments in the near future most likely will be able to would have to undertake such a study and would have to book those expenses. And what that would do is make that five million oh ninety four probably significantly bigger, probably uh, probably twice the amount. And that's just off the top of my head, but I would say uh, I would say I wouldn't be surprised if it was twice that amount. And every district kind of does that. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of debt that's not, we don't know about. And every district in the state, probably most of them in the nation, uh, I would say very few actually do a, an actual study. Uh, that's the uh, what's called the net asset concept, uh, where where we consider long-term assets. If you would, were to look at the concept that we uh, that you budget under, which uh, I think is the one you really should pay more attention to. Uh, that is the one that provides resources in the year they're needed, and, and, and possibly for uh, a, a little uh, for a few months after. Uh, you do a budget. Uh, the budget is based on what you need next year, and uh, you raise your, your tax levy, uh, you set your fees, and so forth, based on going from operating period to operating period. And, and those are discussed on pages 12 and 13. The income statement on page 13 is similar to the, or is basically the same uh, income statement that you would have had in the previous years. It shows a general fund, special education funds, uh, that's, that's uh, for example, uh, special ed um, and uh, some special grants, other governmental funds. Uh, you, uh, under this concept, you have uh, a net fund balance of June 30 of 3 million, 836, 657, you see that? Okay. That one basically is spendable resources. Where under the statement of net assets, we're not talking about spendable resources, we're talking about your net worth, whether uh, the cash flows into the system next year or five years down, down the line is not, is not a, a principle of that. And under this one, this is net current assets or spendable resources. So this one gives you for operating purposes, a little better handle of where you sit and, and uh, where you're going to be uh, next year, uh, or what you can use it in the next current year. And uh, I won't go through this tonight, but this gives you a good summary of, uh, if someone has some questions about this, of course I'll be happy to answer, but this gives you a good summary also of what's in your both, uh, both on the net asset or the, or the fund balance approach. But, uh, if, if I told you to pay attention to something in this report, it would be the statements that are on pages 12 and 13. Because those are the things you work with when it comes to budget time. These are the balances you have to consider when you put your budget together. And these are the things that uh, Pat Arndt is, is more apt to give you information on than she is on the, on the GASB 34 complicated statements. <coughs> Lynn, um, Bill, on page three, I, I underlined and kind of focused on this fund balance because we've always been grounded that it's it's like a checkbook balance rather than a savings, and it's a checkbook balance at the end of the month yeah. or at the end of the year in this case. But um, would you review for us that second bullet point under financial highlights on page three so that we understand that it's not 3800000 that's in our fund balance for spending that in fact, it's only about 24% of that. Uh, okay, uh, on the governmental funds, uh, yeah. I'm, I, yeah, I'm, either, where are we talking about even uh, Right, as okay. of July 30, yes. And then it says that approximately 20%, 24% of this total. Sure. Um, I'm gonna ask you to go back to page um, 12. Okay. I think in your management letter, you also had a nice, capsulization of that on page four. Is that what you were referring to, Bill, there, the, um, the fund balance piece that was in our pocket? That might be what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm on page the four of this the three million mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> if, you, if you look on, uh, if you look on page 12, page 12, if you'll find, uh, I've got that figure highlighted, by the way, but lower right, 
hand corner, the fourth right. item from the bottom, you see that three million eight thirty six. Mm -hmm. That's the figure that Lynn's referring to. Um, of that amount, uh, there are certain. I always say, look at yourself as having a pair of bib overalls. Okay, and you've got a whole bunch of pockets <coughs> in those bib overalls, and your wife sticks some money in this pocket and says, now this is for this. Okay, we need a new car five years down the road, and this is how the family's going to operate. The car money goes here. Okay. The restaurant money goes here when we go out to eat and stick stuff in a whole bunch of other pockets. And what we have left to do with whatever we want, honey, is the $935,000. So these other funds uh, and all these other pockets, those are represented up above. Uh, federal funded aid, there's uh, some federal program money, there's some scholarship money. Of course, you can't spend scholarship money to run the, the district because somebody gave you a gift and said that gift's got strings attached to it. Uh, debt service money, you uh, you have debt covenants, you have legal instruments that says you will levy so much debt and that money will be set aside in a special account and be used for nothing else. That's 925000 That's all you legally can use that for. Uh, and then if you get down to the big one, cash flow. Uh, that's a, uh, That is a figure that's set aside to represent what the district needs for operations and base, it's based on you can go, uh, as I mentioned, the balance sheet is a snapshot, but if you go month by month by month and cash flow yourself out, you're going to find there are times when cash falls below the danger line. So what do you do? You actually have to go back and borrow. I think at the end of the year you were, you had borrowed five, five million dollars. But uh, of, of the, uh, to get you to, and, and this is for operating periods, and there are times when you're above the line without that, there are times where you, you couldn't operate unless you did that. But the district had designated 1.5 million for cash flow purposes. Well, so what's left, if you add up all of those figures, it's at 3,836,000 that you referred to. And what's left, left uh, uncalled for, undesignated, is the 935,000, which is really not a lot when you consider your budget. Uh, Merrill's always been, uh, back when you were a city school district, at, uh, way back when uh, you budgeted on a calendar year. Well, we don't do that anymore, but the district has never really felt comfortable in levying a lot of money for the purpose of, of creating a fund balance. And, and that's the only way you're going to create your fund balance. It's, more been, it's been more in tune with, well, we really didn't spend everything we anticipated or we had more revenue in some area that we didn't think we were going to get. And that's pretty much how your fund balance has increased. But, as I point out uh, in the management letter, uh, it's hard to say what exactly is a fund balance that is comfortable, but uh, we like to say 20-25% gives you a lot of breathing. You're nowhere near that in any sense of the word. So you say you have an, an adequate fund balance? No, you really don't. If you did, you wouldn't be borrowing $5 million a year uh, to get you through the rough periods. It also affects, as, as we've talked about before, the cash flow borrowing. Uh, also our bond rating, and it'll come to surface again on the 28th when we look at refinancing some debt. We have more, we actually have more that we, you know, we have available that we could refinance, but we can't because of the limit of how much uh, um, we've already taken on cash flow, so that will play into it because we don't have the, the bigger fund balance, So and it, it, it can affect interest rate. So it works against us, not in favor, and I've, I've shown you other things on that before. So. Anything else, then? Anyone else have questions? Tom? Could I just kind of follow up on this question, that $935,000? Does the money that was returned, or if that's the correct term, as a result of Act 11, is that included in that $935,000? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Uh, well, is that still is that still there? Okay. Yeah, it's three hundred and twenty-one thousand. We had it reserved under employee Wisconsin. Okay, that's part of that. Right. Oh, okay, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, right there. Yep. Yeah, it, it's 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 not in the nine thirty-five, but it would be in the three million eight thirty-six. Okay, yep. I see. All right, thank you. Any anyone else have questions? Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else from you? I would just say uh, it look, looks like it, when you look at your when you look at these comparable last year types of figures, um, you 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 actually 
the general fund was approximately $165,000 to the good. But when you look at uh, your, your total expenditures of almost $25 million, what's $165,000? You know, it's, you might as well say we broke even, which is kind of the budget concept. So uh, you didn't hurt yourself, and uh, and you did yourself a little good for the year. I think if you could continue operating like that over the years, who ha in good shape. So um, you're not in the worst shape, but don't let anybody tell you that you have a lot of room to spare. A little, a little flux in special ed, and you know that could be gone. <clears throat> and I just want to clarify: you use the bib overhauls scenario. That you know, you say, well, honey, that other pocket's what we have to spend, and I think that's part of where you two are going too. That it, it isn't uh, accounted for, it isn't reserved for something, but yet it plays into all of the other things that I mentioned. So it isn't like a picky bag sitting there that can be given away because it would really hurt. It's true. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you for coming in. This Thank you. Audit. We are moving on to district-wide crisis plan, which is item C2, and uh, it's included in your packet on pages 8 through 98. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of work, Mr. Donald. There's no tree lovers in. <laughs> I'm also going to give you the, because um, the copy that you received, there were some editing um, items that still need to be done and so these are what the final products are going to look like. Colin, are you still with us? I, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting you're there. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to remember to come back sure. and ask you for that name <laughs> responsibility of the um, emergency care coordinator and safety coordinator for the district uh, a request was made by each of the building administrators to submit a copy of their crisis response plan safety response plan intervention prevention response plan and the reason why I'm saying that is as they came in each building uh, each building's plan was a little bit different than the others. No two were alike. All of them covered the same ingredients, but yet they weren't alike. And when we're talking about responding to a crisis, and because of the amount of individuals within our district that are traveling teachers, uh, students in different buildings at different times, uh, substitute teachers, it was felt that we needed to have a consistent response plan uh, in, in format the same and alike in each of the buildings. And that's what arrived uh, about the, um, the need to, to revise. Um, that along with our systemization process that we currently are undertaking with other components within our district, um, I, con I contacted uh, Edward Steele with Wausau Insurance. Wausau Insurance is our insurance carrier. Uh, he is the um, loss prevention service director with them. And he helped me in taking a look and reviewing our crisis plan. He also works with Wausau, D.C. Everest, and Stevens Point. And so what he did was he got me copies of uh, those districts and we sat down and just took a look at different components, ingredients that were included in theirs uh, compared with the one that we had. Um, I then mixed and matched and did a little bit of changing and adjusting here and there. He then took uh, a copy uh, and went back and uh, reviewed it and made some suggestions for a revision with his team. I took it back, made revisions. I then gave it back to him and he looked at it and maybe made a few more which uh, this is how we arrived 
at this this evening. If you take a look, and I'm not going to read through, uh, because again, you've had in that we would be here in how many days? Um, you can look at it through your uh, at your leisure. Uh, just some of the main ingredients of it. If you turn to the table of contents, emergency contents. <coughs> thought that and this was, for example, one thing that was done a little bit different, putting them all up front. And I guess just so I can describe with you, and it will be described to staff members. Uh, how it's going to be implemented is each uh, building administrator during the staff meeting will bring their staff members up to speed and review this with them. Uh, designate where in their rooms these are to be kept. Uh, if you flip to the Roman numeral number two, there it shows a list of the emergency care designees. These are just as indicated with the, with the brief descriptor underneath. Uh, these are individuals that are trained uh, first aid and CPR through the American uh, Red Cross uh, with classes that were taken at, uh, through the Merrill Fire Department or through Sally Fund at the high school. Also included with this would be our crisis team members and the difference being there, what's the difference between an emergency care designee or a crisis team member. A crisis team member would be anybody that would be contacted in case, uh, let's say, of a bomb threat or death of a student or uh, something along those lines. So different than an emergency care person, that would be, for example, if a, if a staff or student um, passed out in class or, or, or whatever. Um, so. One other thing that we talked and we discussed about uh, with and in having and I wanted to keep this document as simplified as possible. Uh, the need for maybe having an even quicker response for those uh, emergencies or crisis crises that may occur <coughs> on a regular basis or or be more more apt to occur, and so one other component that is going to go along with this that will be, uh, and the plan is to put it in each of the classrooms um, uh, by a teacher's desk, by the phone, uh, on their computer, will be a quick response, just a quick reference flip chart. And that hasn't been completed yet, but looking something like this with, and I still haven't worked out, I'm going to meet with Ed again as far as what we want to include. <laughs> Um, like emergency contacts, again, a, 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 a faculty member you know, passes out on the floor. Oh my gosh, what do we do, what do we do? And for student reference as well, um, just a quick reference can flip to, what do I, and he'll explain, what do I do? And where do I go, who do I contact? And again, having each of these in each of the classrooms. So um, that's still yet to be done. One other part that is going to go along with this crisis response plan that again was included in some of the some of the binders that some of the buildings submitted were prevention and intervention measures, and that's going to be uh, a document that is also going to be distributed. But I didn't want it to be included with the crisis response plan. This being for more immediate situations, that being more for preventative measures uh, so that it wouldn't become too cumbersome, too full uh, in case of a response. Any questions for Jeff? Um, we are looking to adopt this this evening. Any comments or questions? Uh, you, I, what is your training procedure? What's your timeline? Are you going to practice these things? This is going, we want, to, we want to get this to staff member, and every, by the way, every staff member in the district will have this. Uh, as far as implementing that, we're going to want to put that in place as quickly as we can. Um, the training for this and how to use this and the ingredients that are going to go into this will be done at, at a staff meeting or at, at, within your own building. So, I mean, we'll actually practice with students eventually lockdowns or... Um, as of right, as of right now, we 
we you don't. Have to be determined. Yeah, you have to be determined. There's we strategies both ways. There's philosophical things. You know, we've had some beginning discussions on that, but we still there are a lot of things that you want to do. There's some things you don't. Uh, you know, as far as the actuals, we all we're all used to fire girls and all that. But we did have a beginning discussion um, with, uh, and I'm going to forget the uh, term, some uh, crisis planner. It was like Coleman County, or I can't remember what who it was. But you know, some other things that we may look at, especially at the high school. And um, so, those the, the beginnings of those discussions have started. And that's about it. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions or comments? Vernon, I would look for a motion to approve the district wide site that's been presented. Please. I will vote for the one. Do I have a second to that motion? Carrie. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Please? No, I would uh, like to see the Dominic Park Center for all of his work. I think it's it's really important. Yeah, I would like to see the Dominic Park Center for all of his work. I think it's it's really a good thing that the, that the whole district is running on the same program. And I think that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Vernon, I would like to see the Dominic Park Center for all of his work. I think it's it's really a good thing that the whole district is running on the same program. And I think that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Vernon, I would like to see the Dominic Park Center for all of his work. I think it's it's really a good thing that the as you kind of flip through and I just kind of page through a little bit. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Lynn? I appreciate the straightforward step-by-step -step mm -hmm. language. The language is critical and an emergency that it's brief and to no other dis oh, sorry, Brenda. I'm just impressed how quickly you were able to compile this. <laughs> I, I had a lot of help and by the way I'd like to uh, command um, Lori Poggle played a, a big part in helping me to put this together, and so I'd like to acknowledge her efforts. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, and also Ed Steele, I mean, he was a great help. Um, you know, many times, and again, also, also two of the other administrators within the district looked at it and made suggestions for revisions too, but. Sometimes I think we maybe forget the outside help that's that is there to take advantage of because he was more than willing at any time to make the drive up to go through to to give um, supplemental information from other districts. He also is going to I guess one other point that is somewhat related to this. Uh, we're going to be setting up an annual walk through of buildings with him and his team, and and again it's going to maybe more and go along the lines of uh, safe schools and the safety plan that we're going to have for the district that will be submitted to you at a date to be determined. Uh, but again, it's connected with this and it just really was nice to have his analytical eyes take a look at and the suggestions that he had. So. There's no other discussion and all those in favor of approving the crisis response plan as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. Anyone abstaining? Colin, did you vote aye? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jeff. We appreciate it. And Lori and everyone who worked on this. It's quieter than Louise. Was yes, now. Louise is a little more vocal. You'll have to speak up more often. <laughs> uh, moving on to Student Board of Ed representative report. Brandon and Liz. Wants to start off tonight. I will. Next Wednesday and Thursday we'll have the semester finals for students, and on Friday we will have an in service for students, so we get some, a break after the finals. <coughs> um, for the high school musical, the spring musical has been cast, and people have the cast has started practicing. Um, performance will be April first through the third in the high school auditorium. I have sports. Um, Wrestling Kings 2 and 1, they will be taking on DC Everest at DC Everest. Maybe bring it up to 3 and 1. Hockey, well, there's 0 and 8 right now, but this Thursday we have played against Marshfield, who's only 1 and 6. So we might have a chance. We're looking, <laughs> we're looking for a chance this year. We're getting up there. Uh, girls basketball team is 6 and 1. They're tied for first in the Valley, and they're looking to play. Marshfield at home on Friday. Girl, or boys basketball is two and five, and they will also be playing um, Marshfield. And then we have forensics. Um, the competitive season has begun for the forensics team. Our first competition will be sub districts on February 12th, which is held here in the district at Merrill High School. 
and Student Council. Student Council is sponsoring a Valentine's Dance on February 13th from 8 o'clock to midnight. The high school jazz bands will be down at the Stevens Point Jazz Fest on, on January 30th, and I'm a member of the jazz band. And last year I had the unique experience. The pre person that helped us out with our band was the person who wrote the book that I learned to play bass from, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have a band concert coming up. The Wind Ensemble and the Symphonic Bands will have a concert entitled Movie Mania on February 2nd at 7.30 in the high school auditorium. Um, as a women's album, and Brian knows some of the things we'll be playing include um, Medley's like, um, songs from Star Trek and Jesus Christ Superstar, some Simon and Garfunkel, things like that. And then the academic decathlon team. Our team attended regionals on January 9th um, at UW Students Point, and in the past 22 times that they've competed, this is the 21st time that they've qualified for regionals and they competed against 71 other teams throughout the state. And we received, the team received many individual awards. I know there were some, there was a first place interview, a third or fourth place speech, um, I think a first place botany. There were some, a student awarded for music, and I think there were some other areas. So we did very well. On February 9th, there will be the local soul ensemble. Every Merrill High School band student has to compete in this soul ensemble. It gives them a chance to focus on their music and get critiqued. So if they plan to go into the district area soul ensemble, which is also usually held at the high school here. And John Gravel and Katie Wade will be joining the All-State Band on January 31st. We'll get to practice with other students and band members from around the state and Wisconsin Rapids. And later on that night, they will be um, performing for the Wisconsin chapter of the National Band Association. And then I also have two things to add. On January 29th, there's going to be a freshman orientation um, from 6 to 7.30. This is mostly, um, mostly for parents, but students are also invited. Um, the guidance department and also the administrators are going to give presentations to the parents and students and then there will be tours afterwards. And then um, academic awards. We've been working on, student council has set up a committee with help from the administration working on making academic award ceremonies better, improving them, helping to recognize our students better. And um, we sent out, we mailed surveys to ask parents, we mailed surveys out to every student who received an award in the fall, which was 233. This includes, you know, two students in one home, so they got two letters. But um, we mailed out surveys asking parents for comments and if they would rather do a banquet type setting once a year than to do the regular ceremony that we do. And we received 51 in favor of a banquet and 41 or 42 not in favor. So student council has decided that we're going to do a banquet in the spring. And for now our tentative date for that is May 17th. <coughs> and right now we're still planning where the, the food, how we're going to do the meal, um, the location and which speaker we're going to have. So, but we decided we're going to do one banquet instead of two ceremonies. We're hoping to get a lot better attendance and to recognize our students better. I'm glad you're working on it, the academic awards is something. I'm glad you're talking about it and trying to do something special. <coughs> um, any other questions or comments for the student representative? Seeing none, thank you very much for your report. Um, anything on legislative this evening? No, I don't have anything to update on tonight. Old business is not. And we're moving on to new business. Item E, we have minutes. Of December 17th, regular board meeting. They are in your packet. <coughs> um, everyone was present, but Louise was on the phone, so I believe she can vote on those minutes as well. We have a motion to approve the minutes of the December 17th meeting. John, okay. do I have a second? <coughs> Kurt, I'll second. Are there any corrections, <coughs> discussion, and additions to those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Nay. <coughs> Anyone abstaining? Thank you. Thank you. Heard you that time, Colin. Thanks. <coughs> Claims and vouchers. Uh, Tom. Yes, uh, I would uh, offer a motion to approve vouchers numbered 70929 through 71956 in the amount of $2,175,854.51. Do I have a second? Louise. I will second. Any discussion, Tom? Uh, again, Pat uh, was very helpful in explaining uh, large amounts of money that we're spending. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to understand where it's going on. So appreciate that. I would agree. It takes a lot of money to keep this outfit running. Um, any other questions or discussion on the vouchers? If there are none. We we'll vote to approve the vouchers as stated. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. Anyone abstaining? Uh, check number 71883. Thank you, John. Check number 71385 and check number 71890. Thank you. Anyone else? Colin, was that an aye? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, those are approved. Moving on to the next item on the agenda. It involves the quick claim deed to the town of Pine River land. Um, there was a recommendation from Jay Telusty, our attorney. It's on pages 104 and 105 involving some property and a deed from, I believe, 1909. And school district property. Um, Sally, did you want to make a comment about Jay's recommendation? Sure. Um, I believe it's very, um, I don't know if routine is the right word, but, you know, it's it's a cleanup of paperwork, of misunderstandings, or or just taking and making sure that the paperwork is appropriate. Uh, it, way back, year, many years ago, uh, there was, sec in sections, there was an acre put aside for school districts. Uh, that was when they first were really starting the common school. Uh, district in our state and so if they weren't used you know they reverted back and so this is some paperwork trail that needs to be cleaned up for the individuals uh, who own it so uh, I do recommend that you follow uh, Mr. Tulasi's recommendation. Are there any questions or discussion on this uh, recommendation uh, to approve the quick claim deed to return the acre of property in the town of Pine River to these two families? Seeing none, is someone wishing to make a motion to um, approve the quick claim deed? Done. That will be approved the quick claim deed. Do we have a second? Brenda, second that. Any other discussion, John? Brenda? No. Why don't you read the two names? The two um, families. The two families would be Timothy and Pamela Moat and Edward and, Edward and Don Vruwing. E-R-U-W-I-N-K. Any other discussion or questions on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approval of the quick claim deed signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. Anyone abstaining? That motion carries. Moving on to the district writing assessment on pages 106 to 115. Um, we have some information from Don Dubuque and Karen Help. And you're going to step up and give us a little presentation on what's going on with this great Passing 
out a little outline on the writing assessment column. And Don and Karen and Jeff Dahmer are at the table to discuss it. <coughs> okay, I'll begin. I'm involving Jeff Donro and Karen Helt here uh, because both of, them, both of them have been working with different parts of language arts and as we transition from what we're doing with our improvement efforts in the district, what we've been doing with our improvement efforts in the district to our systematization plans, uh, this will be a component of the literacy part of the systematization plan of which Jeff and Karen are going to be in charge of tending to that piece of it. Okay, so they're not going to do this with me as well. We're going to have a four-part uh, presentation here in about ten minutes and an attempt to answer any questions that you have. The first part is uh, we're going to just do a quick review of where we came from with the development of a rating assessment. And part of that we uh, talked about the last year and the year before. I'm just going to build upon that. Then we're going to uh, transition into discussion with the administrators and with the faculty on the district writing assessment plan. And last summer, we had a summer academy here on uh, the teaching of the six traits of writing. So we're just beginning that now. And uh, that's not, that hasn't happened district-wide yet. So now we're going to move into, uh, or from, the historic where we came from with the development of the writing assessment to what are we doing with the writing assessment right now in the district? Okay, this year the assessment was given in mid-October at grades 3, 7, and 9 using the same prompts from last year. The high school tweaked theirs a little bit. The kids were addressing it a little bit more informally, so they wanted to just change the wording a little bit to get more of a formal essay from them. In late October then, we scored it, and I want to take this opportunity to thank the scoring team that was in your packet. They, those people, and you've read essays for two days. Mm -hmm. they, they had lots of chocolate. That was our first, our crisis response for scoring the writing assessment. Um, but anyway, I want to thank them for doing that. Technology was really our friend this year. Um, we were able to input the data as the teachers were scoring into a database, which really helped us to turn around the results very quickly. So. Between when they scored at the end of October and mid-November, we were able to get out parent letters to um, either they were mailed at the middle school and high school or they were given out at parent-teacher conferences at the elementary level. Get those in teacher and parents' hands so they knew how their kids did. It defined the six, each of the six traits um, of writing and then let them know how their kids did in each of those. We also were able to very quickly within that time period turn around to teachers on um, at a glance list, class list, or at the ninth grade, um, the whole ninth grade was bulked together because they're not organized by home. <coughs> so we were able to get that into the teacher's hands so they could see at a glance which kids needed some immediate intervention. Okay? So we were very pleased with how that went this year, a little bit smoother than last year. Um, then we did some further analysis, not at the individual level, but at, as a class group at grades 3, 7, and 9 in December. And if I can direct you to that part of your packet, we'll just walk through one of those very quickly. Um, I'll just look at the third grade one. We have some numerical data from last year and this year. And again, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what page number it is in your packet. But what it says, that, what is it? it's grade three at the top. I think it's page 110. Thank you. Um, we have two years of data here. And we really are looking at this as baseline data as we get started in the six traits of writing. Um, you're comparing two different classes, okay, so we, you know, we kind of caution people on comparing apples to oranges. And we're really looking forward to um, keeping track of how our kids are doing as they become more and more proficient in the traits. And also looking at how cohort groups, next year we'll be able to take a look at for the first time how last year's seventh graders did on the ninth grade assessment next fall. So we'll look for support <coughs> there. Um, other things that are in there. The teachers last year asked for some real specific feedback from the scoring teams, and so we tried, you'll see the next part of, of each report, and there's one in here for 7th grade and ninth grade as well. You'll see strengths and challenges, again from last year, and then from this year. And again, this year we asked the scoring teams to be very specific, not just to say conventions were weak, but what within conventions were weak, so teachers could really zero in on that feedback to, to work on improvement with their students. Um, the next thing that you'll see on the flip side of each of those sheets are recommendations for the scoring team. One of the things that they did this year was identify, okay, who, who would we consider to be 
a writer that's going to need some additional intervention. Um, and those at grades three and seven, they were determined that 1.5 or below in any of the traits would be an area teachers need to kind of red flag and say we need to do something. And as the kids progress and get older, high school determined if kids are still at the basic level, which is 2.0 or below by high school, we really want to intervene. Now again, the caution with that is because of when we assess, which if you go back to why we redid this in the first place, we wanted to assess in the fall of the year prior to when they have to take that WKCE writing assessment so that we'd have a whole year. So the ninth graders, for example, that took this, half of them have not had basic comp yet at all, okay? And the other half have been there for probably about a month, okay? So again, it's when we assess, but we wanted to know where are they so we know where we need to get them. Um, the other thing that you'll see is specific student improvement targets. And this is where we're really focusing teachers in terms of um, what they can do in, with classroom interventions. What specifically can we do as teachers? Not just third grade teachers because the assessment's given in third grade, but as kindergarten, first and second grade working toward that, as fourth, fifth and sixth grade working toward the seventh grade assessment and so forth, what can we really focus on with our kids? So you'll see those organized in each grade as well. Um, I think that's all I need to tell you right now. If you take a look in the handout that Don gave you, the three page mm -hmm. handout. And if you turn to the writing assessment results uh, faculty meeting agenda, the importance uh, that the district PK 12 work to be um, <coughs> to be on the same page and uh, covering and, and reviewing those those student records. Don did this when we when um, uh, you as a board um, and as a st as our building uh, staff members and at the building level, we went through our the different chainsaws with Bruce Miles as far as the budgeting, um, put together a faculty agenda, uh, and <coughs> something that uh, we hadn't really done. It was we had, as far as presenting information on a district wide level, uh, the three levels many times work separately. And with doing this and generating this, the attempt is that as a district, we're going to all be on the same page as a student moves from kindergarten all the way up through their senior year. And again, with writing, our students can attest how do they communicate what they know. They do it verbally or they do it by writing. And writing, that's done in, in literally every class and with every subject. And so again, just backtracking a little bit and, and, and fulfilling what Don had said with the reason and rationale and the importance that MAPS is placing on uh, doing writing assessments and the importance of it and focus on it. If you take a look, and I'm not going to read through the, the uh, different or five different points as far as the writing assessment results and how we will arrive at intervening. In the last page on there, you'll see the writing intervention plan. And again, with this, try to keep it, try in, in attempt to keep it as simplistic as possible, not too cumbersome, uh, not too complicated. This is what's going to be used so that uh, a, a student's performance can be bridged from, from one year to the next, so that uh, different attempts uh, to to work with and improve that student uh, student's ability in writing uh, from one year to the next the wheel doesn't have to be reinvented from from one year to the next you can take a look at what's been tried in the past what's worked what hasn't worked to build on that okay. yeah just building on what jeff said there what dr sarnstrom wants what i want what karen and jeff want what the administrative team want in this is the same. We want to make sure we're following up so this so this influences classroom instruction over time and causes student student writing uh, to continually improve. And doing that over time will impact will have a positive impact on uh, student learning in all their core areas. What Jeff just referred to is that that's uh, one of the ways we're beginning to do that follow up. You know, both with the, with the teachers and with the administrators to make sure that we're consistent in having those faculty meetings, pre-K-12 giving that same message. And then also so we can document in the intervention folder for all those students who are students in need of writing assistance, 
uh, the teachers can document what are interventions have they tried, have they worked, what interventions have they tried that haven't worked, and then when they conference with the following year teacher, uh, third grade teacher conferences with fourth grade teacher about this substance, uh, what what better conversation can a teacher have than uh, helping that student jumpstart their learning the following year, taking a look at where they are, what we've tried, what's worked well, what hasn't worked, and what, what do I need to continue to reemphasize the following year, okay? This is going to be used, and when that discussion occurs, the discussion between third and fourth, fifth and sixth, those instructors will be in May, June, or August, September. And not to say that, that this document can't be gone back to at any time during the year. If something else crops up, that you know, red thing goes up. Okay, and the last part is our future considerations. I'm just going to wrap this up. Uh, and the big one is connecting as far as the progress that we've made to date, and then shifting all of this into our systematization plan to make sure that this really is going to happen to a high degree of quality pre-K-12. And that's really where our, our, our big shot with staff development will come in. Because you have to remember, we're just, even though this is a, quite an immense task we've taken on over the last several years, we're still just coming out of the blocks with this right now, okay? Um, comparing and contrasting to the state writing assessments. Again, as we uh, build this and take a look at our trend data, how how are our students doing in our local assessment as anchored against how their performance in the state writing assessment? And and then to ask those critical questions, how are they doing? You know, is there a difference? Why is there a difference? Why is that happening? Um, staying on top, one well, of a little typo there. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that until right now. Staying on top of the proposed ACT uh, writing assessment requirement. And uh, I just got done d discussing this with the superintendent, and Jeff and Karen and I and Jan, I haven't talked to Jan or Brian about this, but uh, Jan and Brian and their department heads for language arts uh, will likely be attending a meeting in February down at Stevens Point, a day-long meeting where uh, they're going to unveil the writing requirement uh, for a college entrance with the ACT test. So um, we, we don't really know much more about it than that right now, but we'll be real smart when we come back. <laughs> Uh, the other things are track, I think Karen might have mentioned this, but I want to reemphasize this, tracking cohort groups over time. When we take a look at, uh, when we look at having enough data on when our third grade students this year are uh, seventh grade students, and when the, that same group of students is ninth grade students, and we start taking a look at how has our writing instruction and our, our interventions influence their achievement over time, we will have something very powerful. And uh, then it's just a continual follow-up that we intend to do with both the uh, principals and the teachers. And I just want to thank Karen and Jeff and all the people who have been connected to making this possible because it's clicking pretty well. Thank you, Don. Questions you have? Anyone have questions or comments for Tom? I uh, found you mentioned the Summer Academy where I, I think you said that that's where the six plus one traits were kind of presented to to the teachers. What what kind of participation did you get in terms of the percentage of teachers or I mean a lot of people participated in, in that kind of uh, opportunity? Good question. Um, I, I I think we had about fifty teachers at each of those academies. All right. But that's that's a great question or the rationale for moving to systematization, because that's not enough. Mm -hmm. All right, what we need to do is to move that institutional, and then that's, that's going to be our plan out, just this, but with all the key key pieces of improving student learning that really matter. So there are in-service days, as an example, that's where everybody would be exposed we're, we're, to. We're going to figure out multiple ways to skip, to deal with that. Uh, in ma you know, managing six improvement targets you know, is going to be a little bit for us to wrestle with. But what we're going to do is likely do it you know, in ways we've done in the past, but the difference is going to be everybody's going to get this, everyone will be held accountable there as well. Anyone else? Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. I appreciate your presentation this evening. Good work. That's great. Second Friday in January enrollment. Some preliminary numbers. These are this is in draft form. Uh, 
I will, uh, I'll send you more concrete numbers once I have them with some comparisons. <coughs> uh, if you look at uh, the bottom right hand corner uh, where it talks about the total, uh, we are up 10. It was 3260 uh, on third Friday in September. Any questions from anyone? You thought it was new. They're, they're, I, I'm using the term draft. Once I can simplify them and I'm more comfortable to, to do some comparisons or whatever, I'll get that out to you. Okay. Two thousand four, two thousand five school calendar. I believe that's in the packet on page one sixteen. And it has to do with the waiver that we've requested for the next school year. Uh, on page uh, one sixteen is the letter uh, from uh, the Department of Public Instruction approving our waiver that uh, we have requested um, several months ago. We, we submitted that request. The essence of that um, uh, was that, and is, that we have, currently we have six half days of instruction paired with six half days of staff development in the, in the uh, afternoon. So in other words, the kids come in in the morning and go home at noon. So and just taking that and repackaging it to three full days of instruction and three days of uh, staff development. Uh, so we have on both parents much easier time and so on. Uh, the department has approved that and therefore the resulting calendar uh, for 2004-05 school year is on page 117. Uh, the Teachers Association uh, has approved this and so the uh, difference in the way that we would count the days is already factored into that. So tonight I'm asking for your approval of that calendar and then people can start planning vacations, et cetera, et cetera. We've got students starting in on September 1st and finishing on June 7th. Am I reading that correctly? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm glad you're bringing it up because the statute is not that school has to start after Labor Day. The statute is September 1. And a lot of people have that confused, that, that we have to start after Labor Day. It is September 1. Okay, so yes, it, we would start uh, before Labor Day, in that essence, because it, Labor Day is so late that year. Go ahead, another question. The gray um, days, <coughs> Labor Day is no school? For kids. Okay. Those would be staff development days. Yeah, and maybe there's a better term, but right now it shows, it shows that those are the days that were combined <coughs> for Labor Day. And I think parents are going to really appreciate this knowing in advance and um, for the people that are watching on TV or whatever, one of the days is on a Friday and the other two are on Mondays, which is nice. That gives the families an extra long weekend. So that will be nice for families to know that. And what, this is a four-year approved waiver. So, and then mm -hmm. uh, after that, if we want to, uh, again to renew it, then we have to request it again, but it is a four-year waiver. And then one other question at the bottom, it says fall parent-teacher conference two evening for November 24th, so we're trading. Mm -hmm. What does that fall respond Yes. Okay. We, we trade uh, two fall parent-teacher conferences for the um, whatever dates indicated on there, and then okay. the same in the spring. And that's pre-K-12, there will be two parent conferences per year? Yes. Well, some of the buildings run it um, a little different at the elementary. It's parent-teacher conferences. Um, middle school, it's a parent-teacher conferences also. Fall. For all four, fall and spring. In spring, it's at risk. At risk. And at the high school, parent-teacher conference. <coughs> Any other questions on the calendar as presented? There are none. Is someone willing to make a motion to approve the school calendar for 0405? Louise. I move approval of this calendar. Do we have a second? Brenda. 
Mm -hmm. Anything else, Louise? I think the combination of days is going to increase um, instruction for the kids. I think it's a very positive thing. Brenda, anything else? I think it looks good also, and I like that we moved the spring break um, a little earlier in the semester. Colin, I remembered you this time. Do you have any comments? No. Okay. Okay. If there is no other discussion, we have a motion to approve the calendar for 2004-2005. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Moving on to item seven, technology audit. Uh, as you see in your packet, I have uh, recommended uh, that we, uh, uh, for your approval, a technology audit. Uh, in addition to what I shared with you in, in the packet, as you know, I mean, technology in, in school districts and keeping up with that is a challenge everywhere. Uh, we have lost over $140,000 of teach money. Uh, now, uh, as this lost it because the state has chosen not to fund teach, uh, as other districts have lost a, a proportional amount. Uh, the district has a huge investment in technology, uh, and so we want to make sure we're getting our best bang for, uh, for the buck. Uh, the district also did have an ad hoc committee uh, that helped, uh, and, you know, those are volunteers um, looking for, uh, you know, a, some professionals to come in and, and just review where we're at and, and help us with uh, direction for the future. Um, the, and, and audits are familiar. If you, if you, right now, remember we talked a little bit about WASA has an audit on their whole district, and to help them is really challenging budget times to make sure we're, we're spending money appropriately. So I think that helps, uh, will help us also. Uh, it will give us a fresh look at this topic uh, with some new eyes, and uh, we have a small technology staff, as you well know, so we want to make sure that we're uh, giving them the best that we can too in, in the direction that should be heading. So with that, um, I, as I've indicated in your board packet, I am recommending to you uh, that uh, you contract with uh, Empyrean Consulting Group out of DeForest, Wisconsin. Uh, I am familiar uh, with uh, the individual who created the company and therefore trust his work. I'm familiar with him for many years uh, and I'm, I'm very confident um, that uh, we will have a, a, an audit that will be helpful for us. Uh, the focus of the audit will be on infrastructure, uh, systems, effectiveness, uh, training needs, uh, total cost of ownership, and also looking at some possible standardization and, and other things. Uh, I'm looking at this to be a, on a time and materials basis, uh, not to exceed $5,000, and I'm very confident that we will get a lot of bang for our buck uh, with uh, what, what they're willing to do for us. So with that, I, I recommend uh, this audit to you. Any questions, discussion, comments? Huh? Uh, just a question in, in your previous experience with these folks. Will we get uh, basically a report with recommendations? Correct. Do you know what the, that will be the end product? Yeah. Correct. A written yes. good, Great question. Would they come to the board to present the report, or would they generally just do a written report? I think, um, I think if it was necessary, you know, that wouldn't be a problem. I mean, we'll wait and see if that is necessary and appropriate at the time. I it wouldn't be a problem if it is. Any other questions, discussion, comments? There are none. Oh, uh, I'll move to approve the technological, <coughs> uh, technology audit with the uh, Imperium Consulting Group uh, with uh, the caveat that we don't exceed $5,000. We have a second to that. John. Anything further, Kurt? No. John? Any other discussion? Questions? Seeing none. All those in favor of approval in the technology audit signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. Anyone abstaining? Sorry, Colin, I missed you again. <laughs> Speak up if you have a comment <laughs> or just say my name. Okay, moving on to retirements and resignations. There's just 118 and 119, and there might be some things. And there was one us. added at your table tonight that came in uh, literally just before the board meeting with Mr. Cook will roll. It's in white paper at your table. I handed it out to you individually, and Mr. Cook will 
sure that would be. Yes, we have uh, two requirements I'd like the board uh, to act on tonight. Um, I recommend approval of the retirement of Rita Whitman, who is an elementary art teacher. And also the one that just came in tonight, uh, recommend the approval of the retirement of Sherry Rondo, who is an elementary teacher at Jefferson Elementary School. Are there any questions on the retirement? to approve the retirements of uh, Rita Wickman and Sherry Rondo. Okay. I move acceptance. Do we have a second? Brenda. I do. Any other discussion, please? Um, no, in reading their letters, though, it, it, um, it really emphasized what teaching meant to those people, and um, it's too bad they won't be here anymore. Brenda. <laughs> Wish them well. Yeah. Uh, Colin, uh, I did not have the paperwork uh, on the last one, so I did not fax that down to you tonight. It came after we faxed, okay. Any other questions or discussion on that? Colin, do you have any questions or discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor of the retirement signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. Anyone abstaining? Those are approved. Thank you. Should I keep going? Yes, please. Uh, we're on to employment, and um, I believe that at the table you have a recommendation for our teaching staff. Yes. Um, as you were aware, the um, we had a um, uh, English uh, position available at the high school. Uh, we did not fill it first semester. We did interviewing and. Um, we could not find a qualified candidate, so we reposted the job, and um, we held interviews on Monday, and I would like to recommend to the board that we hire on a half-year contract Ms. Kelly Zabeldon. Um, Kelly, it was recommended by the committee. Um, Mr. Grand did background checks, so it all came back excellent. The reason we're um, recommending a half-year contract is in the posting for the English position, we requested two certifications, a 300 certification, which is English, and a 320 certification, which is communications. And uh, Ms. Sebeldin did not have the 320 certification. We did not need that specifically this semester, but we would like to have it, uh, her to have it for uh, in the future for scheduling at the high school. So at the interview, uh, she agreed that she would seek that certification, but uh, we're offering a half-year contract so she can show proof that she has um, enrolled in the program. So when you make the the recommendation, whoever makes the motion, um, it'd be for a half-year contract only. Thank you, Tom. Um. I'm assuming, though, that that was her decision to volunteer to get that other certification given that we are not guaranteeing anything for next year. Yes, right. we, and <laughs> Brenda was at the interview, so <laughs> she knows that, that we made that, we, we were very clear and that was an expectation that we had. And, and she agreed to, to seek that. And, and the program, she's graduated from Oshkosh and uh, the 320 certification, Oshkosh is one of the only ones in the state who offers that. So hopefully it'll be a good fit. She made a commitment to get that. We have not made a commitment to her for future employment, even if she gets it. That's why it's a half year contract. So she has to show us that she's enrolled in the program before we would then extend the contract. I guess I'm, what I'm wondering is is there some kind of agreement that if she does that, that we would extend it? A verbal agreement, yes. As, as well as. Um, you know, she basically has to show through performance and things like that. That's not the only way that we would have a long-term contract. But yes, this is a position that we anticipate being on into the future. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. And, and that, I mean, that is a, a typical thing. We've got another one that we will address on certification, too. You know, it, it's a certification issue, like Paul said, that we performance, of course, that will weigh into it. but. It, as far this is a normal routine thing, as he's talking about on certification, it's not a, a, an exception for her or something. 
I'll bring up a question later. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> Any other uh, questions, discussion, comments on the hire? Seeing none, we have a motion to hire <coughs> Brenda. I'd like to make the motion for a recommendation for hiring Kelly Savellman for the high school English position with a half year contract. Do I have a second to that motion? Lynn. I second that motion. Any other discussion, <coughs> Brenda? I'm excited to have her come. Lynn? Any other questions or discussion on this motion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the hire signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Nay. Anyone abstain? Thank you. All? Um, <laughs> Kelly has a topic. <laughs> My issue. Yellow. 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 Um, because we offered her only a half year contract, um, we still have to, just like with Paul Strand, as we did later, we have to go through the formal process of issuing her not only a preliminary letter of non renewal, but a formal letter of non renewal. And I told her that we'd be hiring her and laying her off or not renewing her on the same night or over the same process. But she understood that. It's, it's statute. It's something that we have to do. So um, I think we have to handle these separate because of uh, John's circumstance. Uh, the first recommendation is to uh, uh, let the board issue a preliminary notice of non renewal to Kelly Savelle. <coughs> We have a motion to issue a preliminary notice of non renewal to Kelly Sedalvin. Bring that. Okay, I recommend that we issue a preliminary notice of non renewal to Kelly Sedalvin. Do we have a second to that motion? Louise. I second that motion. Any other comment, Brenda? Uh, no. Louise? I hope she enjoyed her job. <laughs> <laughs> she will be employed with us. Um, <laughs> this is the reason for my question yeah. before. <laughs> you know, if we're making some commitment uh, uh, based on her willingness to gain additional certification, uh, we obviously then have some commitment, it sounds like, to hire her if she gets that, despite this. Yeah, yes, and we and we made it clear to her, you know, that she needs to show us that, but still, like I said before, we, had, we anticipate there will be a position available for her if, if she shows us that she's willing to be certified, does a good job next school year. Any other questions or discussion on the non-renewal? I'm voting on the non-renewal for Kelly Sebeldin. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed to me? Anyone abstaining? That motion carries. Um, the next one is uh, I uh, recommend that the board approve issuing Joan Crone, a 60% Head Start teacher, a preliminary notice of non renewal of her contract effective at the end of the 2003 2004 school year. Um, same issue. Um, Mrs. Crone is seeking recertification for the 2004 2005 school year. Um, for her current position, and um, we've, uh, Mr. Dwayce and I have discussed that with her, and when she can show us that she is uh, either has a certification or is in a program which works towards certification so we can continue her emergency licensing, then we will um, re-employ her in that position. So this is a t these are timeline things because we have to issue our non-renewals yes. before February, we are locked into having to do this now. Yes. Okay. Do, is there any discussion on the non-renewal? I guess, uh, what is the certification? It's uh, pre, um, pre kindergarten, early okay, So childhood. she's certified K something, and now she's going to Yeah, we have an emergency license for her right now. And the, but the emergency license is only a year to year to year. And with uh, new requirements of No Child Left Behind, um, the state has been um, getting um, more stringent on um, what emergency licenses we can get for people. They have to demonstrate that they're in a certification program that they will receive certification within three years. So, but I mean, your degree is, is preliminary, I mean like what, K3? I don't even know what elementary licenses are. And so she just needs the 
Correct. some of the credits for pre-K. There's right. a difference. Yeah. She doesn't in have a certification that matches what she's currently in. Yeah. She, I see. As far as her the approved certification, she and uh, she has to. Jillian has an emergency for what she is teaching. Okay. She's doing an excellent job. I'm uh, sure. <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? The Byzantine world with DPI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other questions or discussion? Do we have a motion to issue the non-renewal? I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion, Carrie? Lynn? Any other discussion? Colin, anything? Okay, we're voting on the motion to non-renew Joan Thorn. All those in favor, signify one. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm just going to make sure that he, if he abstains, can he abstain or no? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed, nay? Anyone abstain? Abstain. <laughs> <laughs> one abstention. That motion carries. Thank you, Paul. And one more. Um, I recommend to the board that we issue a final notice of non-renewal to Paul Strand, PRMS math teacher, at the end of the 2003-2004 school year. Uh, the reason for the final notice of non-renewal mm -hmm. is um, the fact that uh, Paul was hired for the one-year contract as well. So we still have to formally non-renew him. Mm -hmm. Someone ready to make a motion to issue the final notice of non-renewal for Paul Strand? Then I move approval of the final issuance of non-renewal to Paul Strand. Do we have a second to that motion? Please. I would second that. Any discussion, Lynn? Um, is this a job that, is this math position um, will then be posted, or what's what happens then? Uh, we have to look at staffing at uh, all levels okay. of uh, the district and then decide if it's posted or not. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Louise? No, that was my question to any other questions or discussion on that non -renewal? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. Anyone abstaining? Did you miss that one higher? There was, that was a, uh, I was a repeat from last time. Oh, so we got so we a don't copy need to paste do. issue. So okay. we did that last time. So we don't need to do that. No. Okay. You are finished then? I'm finished. Okay. Motion's carried. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the next item on the agenda, we have donations on pages 120 to 128 in your agenda. We have some, these forms really are great, by the way. I think they work out really well. They're very clear, everything's all in the same place. Um, we have $1,750 from Church Mutual Insurance to uh, support our Merit Debate Program. We have a $500 uh, donation from Gerald Whitburn supporting our Merit Debate Program. Um, $200 in time at the school forest from Bill Lessenhop, and another $120 in time spent at the school forest with Mr. Lessenhop. Um, central carpeting and flooring at the school forest, a donation from Mark Cooper in the amount of $60. Dan, New Dan Newman. $500 for time and skill in helping to some building at the school for us. Boy, Mary just really has, yes, people are working out there. Mrs. Evans and her kindergarten class donated four nature books to the school for us to $20 to improve the library. Don Wendorf, <coughs> time and equipment worth $700. Mowing our logging roads and trails. And finally, Washington PTO, a check for $381.49 to purchase a digital camera for Washington School. Do I have a motion to approve the donations that we just mentioned? Huh? I would uh, make a motion to approve these donations as you have just read. Do I have a second? It's Kurt. I'll second. Any discussion, Tom? We heard a quick example tonight of just how important these donations are to the success of, of a lot of the uh, different uh, groups and, and uh, extracurricular activities that are provided to students. We appreciate that. Kurt? Mm -hmm. I agree. Big thank you. 
anyone else? Alan, anything? We will vote on the motion then to approve the donations. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. Anyone abstaining? That motion carries. And we thank everyone for their generous donations. Our next. And we will have a special budget meeting on January 28th at 5.30 p.m. Um, that's in two weeks. And then the next regular board meeting will be February 25th at 7 p.m. in the boardroom. Are there any additional items for the next agenda? There are no ones. Seeing nothing, then Sally and I will put that together. And I believe Lynn and Louise have volunteered to do the radio tomorrow since Sally cannot be there. Okay, you're going to go there? Mm -hmm. Okay, then, then go ahead, will. Louise, because I have another obligation. Okay. I just threw my name in. So. Okay, all right. Great. So Louise and I will do the video. <laughs> okay, great. Anyone else is welcome to join us if you're free. Come to WJMT. Okay, uh, we're at the end of the agenda then, and uh, you'll bear with me as I read this very short motion. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn into executive closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statutes under sections 120.13 paren 1 and C and 19.85 paren 1 and A deliberating concerning a case which was the subject of any judicial or quasi-judicial trial or hearing before that governmental body. C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. E, deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. F, considering financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific persons, preliminary consideration of specific personnel problems, or the investigation of charges against specific persons, except where paragraph B applies, which, if discussed in public, would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data, or involved in such problems or investigations and G, conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is likely to become involved. 118.125, for the purpose of conducting hearings on recommended student expulsions that may involve discussions of confidential student records and to discuss other matters involving student records and personal histories. That, if discussed in public, would likely have a substantial adverse effect on the reputations of the persons discussed. The purpose of this closed session is to continue the expulsion hearing and discussion of the extension of administrative contracts as necessary. Do I have a motion to adjourn into closed session? Do I have a second? John. Second. Can I have a roll call vote, please? John Crone. Aye. Brenda Maver. Aye. Thomas Muller. Aye. Colin Niemeyer. Aye. Louise Schutz. Aye. Lynn Zentner. Aye. Kurt Eckes. Aye. Carrie Kaler. Aye. Pat Burke. Aye. That was carried in the closed session with a brief one minute recess, please.